How many cups of coffee have you had? Well, at least ten. Ten. Ten, but yeah, it's been a long, it's been a long forbidden door, and it's been a great forbidden door. Yeah. What a huge success this pay per view has been. Uh, this is our third forbidden door. It's what a great partnership, and uh, tonight was not only a great pay per view, also a great live event here. Like we said, over eleven thousand fans here at UBS Arena paid and uh, over a million dollars, live gate, really, really special. Third straight year with over 11,000 fans and over a million dollar live gate, which is pretty cool too. Hell yeah, congratulations. Congrats to you, let's go. Thanks, buddy. thanks, congrats to you. Guys, questions for Tony, how about it? Lyrics went and sing the radio, so during the show, um, Forbidden Door, it was announced, um, Wrestle Dynasty, January 5th, Tokyo Dome, CMLL, Stardom, Ring of Honor, AEW, New Japan for Wrestling. Um, this is pretty monumental as far as interpromotional collaboration. So talk a little bit about how this came about and what should we expect? Well, it's really exciting. It'll be a big week in Japan. It'll be a big week in wrestling. January 4th and 5th, Tokyo Dome will have Wrestle Kingdom and Wrestle Dynasty. AEW and ROH are gonna be a part of it. I know uh, CMLL, Stardom, New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's really exciting. Uh, we had great collaboration, all those companies involved here tonight in Forbidden Door, and we're all gonna go to Japan, it's gonna be really exciting. It'll be uh, very interesting, it'll be a great time for AEW, we'll also be uh, starting a new year here, we'll have uh, Dynamite and uh, everything coming up that week. It'll be a very important week for the company, but we're gonna work with New Japan Pro Wrestling and support both companies, and uh, as well as all of our other international partners for the first ever Wrestle Dynasty uh, in conjunction with Wrestle Kingdom. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Larry. Hi, Tony. Kimmy Sokol with the Pop Ring. So speaking of Ring of Honor, there are two sets of Ring of Honor tapings in the Arlington residency. I was wondering, is that kind of like a trial thing? Is it one or done? Or is that something you're looking to do more often with Ring of Honor? Well, I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about everything we're bringing to the Dallas Metroplex and to Arlington. It's going to be a great series of events there. We're bringing the path to All In, the Summer Series coming up in July and continuing into August. Lots of great events with AEW and ROH, including Death Before Dishonor and these tapings. We've had some great success. I thought we had some great shows at Universal Studios, taping some ROH matches in that intimate environment, separate as a standalone show. And I'd love to try that again. And I think we'll have some great events. We'll have some really exciting things. Very interesting to have a new ROH World Television Champion, Atlantis Jr., winning the title from Kyle Fletcher at Arena Mexico. We saw Kyle Fletcher was none too pleased. It had been a very challenging week for him. He was on this great roll. And then, of course, uh, Mark Briscoe Thursday night retained the ROH World Championship versus Fletcher, and then Kyle was in Arena Mexico. Atlantis Jr., the new World Television Champion, Kyle Fletcher tonight was a man on a mission. Uh, and uh, Atlantis Jr. is going to be a great world television champion. That's going to be a very interesting situation, but talk about more great collaboration between the companies. And for ROH, I'm excited to have those tapings uh, in Dallas and really everything coming up in Arlington at the Path to All-In Summer Series should be great. And the Arlington Esports Stadium is going to be a great venue for ROH and AEW. Thank you. Tony, let's talk about these shoes that are in front of you really quickly. We've okay. got the Brody Lee. Uh, it's a beautiful shoe, uh, paired up with Reebok. Comes out July 1st, which is tomorrow, available at champsports.com. But what do you think about the shoe? Beautiful. It's beautiful. It was really great. Uh, the shoe is amazing. And also, uh, Amanda Huber had some beautiful words earlier tonight on uh, the pre-show on the Zero Hour with you, Renee. Thank you for hosting her. Uh, Amanda, thank you for uh, everything you do for AEW, and I'm really excited to, to work with you and Brody Jr. and Nolan on uh, the launch of this shoe coming up uh, tomorrow. Should be a great launch, and it's a great week for AEW, and uh, we crowned a new TNT champion tonight. Of course, it was a, that was a great match, but I think the greatest TNT champion will always be Mr. Brody Lee, and uh, very excited about this new shoe launching to celebrate the exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee. John Huber. Thank you, man. Thanks for that. Andrew Vidal, Final Media. Hello, Tony. Hello, Renee. Uh, congratulations on tonight. 
with the next pay per being all in at Wembley Stadium, are you possibly looking to move that IP because it has a ton of value somewhere else? Uh, pardon? No, wait, which IP would that be, Drew? The all in. Are you, would you consider another venue? Well, Wembley Stadium, last year we set the world record for ticket sales. I think we've got something really special at Wembley Stadium. Potentially, uh, All In could be a great event for AEW globally. I think that I'm very focused on our next event, which is obviously AEW All In Wembley Stadium, and I think that's our biggest event we've ever done, and it's a dream come true to go back to Wembley Stadium. I think it's a huge, huge event anywhere in the world. In particular, I think Wembley Stadium is the greatest venue in all of sports, and this is the greatest event in the history of AEW, and it's so monumental we're going back. It's really an unprecedented thing to go back and try something like this back-to-back -back years in the same incredible mecca for sporting. Last year after we sold 81,035 tickets, set a world record, we're going back. I think it's a really bold play, and we're off to a great start on tickets. You know, we're really at a very similar pace to last year, which is tremendous. It was a smart move getting out earlier this year and starting the sales, but we got out to a great big on sale last time, and we really have had a really good pace for sales, and I think just like last year, as we started ex announcing exciting matches and things really started rolling more and more in the summer, and we got that great momentum last summer and had that huge, huge lift week, week, week of just lift, lift, lift on ticket sales for Wembley Stadium. I think we're going to see that again because this is going to be a really hot summer for us. So uh, I think right now we're focused on that, which is the best event in wrestling at the best venue in sports. Thank you. Sorry back here. Hey. Hey, okay, tell me, Jay uh, Segarra, Russell Bars, pleasure. Congratulations on uh, an incredible car, show, dynamic. Um, you brought up these sneakers, and this is something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, why Reebok? Are we going to see more uh, deals or uh, collaboration of shoes that we're going to get out? Um, and then my second question is uh, we just saw the Swerve Strickland shirts that West Side Gun from Fourth Rope did this past weekend, the Danny Garcia shirt. Are we going to see some more potential collaborations with West Side Gun and Fourth Rope? Well, West Side Gun is a great supporter of AEW and uh, he's been a big believer in us. And anytime we're anywhere near his home state of New York or anywhere near anywhere West Side Gun can participate, I love it. He comes to so many of the shows, he's a huge wrestling fan. And West Side Gun is Team AEW, and great to have those great collaborations you mentioned with great stars in AEW, great stuff working with people like Daniel Garcia and Swerve Strickland. And we've had these great collaborations with Reebok, uh, the Mr. Brody Lee shoe, working with the Elite, uh, lots of great partnerships. Really excited about that, and I would definitely like to continue that collaboration as well. So those are great uh, partnerships and crossovers for AEW. Thank you for asking. Fernando Quiles Jr. for MMA Knockout on Sports Illustrated. This is a two-part for you, Tony. Uh, first of all, uh, earlier in the evening, uh, Brody King took what looked to be a nasty brain buster from Tomohiro Ishii. He ended up going through with the match, but just wanted to know if he was doing okay. And then the second part of my question is, you know, you've done three Forbidden Door events at this point. Can you tell me about the learning experiences that you've gone through and what you've learned from doing cross promotions from all these different um, companies such as New Japan, Stardom, and CMLL? Thank you, I really appreciate it. Well, first of all, first and foremost, uh, Brody King will be okay, he's, he's okay. Uh, and that was a scary move and it's a da very dangerous wrestling move, but Brody King is okay and uh, will be able to continue wrestling and everything's okay there, but that is a dangerous move and Tomohiro Ishii is a dangerous wrestler. Uh, great to have great stars from New Japan, including Ishii, who's one of the greats in all the world of wrestling, here participating in the Forbidden Door. Uh, Forbidden Door has been such a great event, like you said, we've done it in three of the greatest cities in the world, three of the greatest wrestling cities, to go from Chicago, Toronto, and now here in New York. And like I said, to continue the business success at each event, there's been over 11,000 paid fans and over a million dollar gate. It's unprecedented success. We're going to continue it, keep it going. It's a great partnership. We expanded it this year. Uh, in addition to the great partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling, there was involvement from our partners and friends in Mexico at CMLL and from our friends at Stardom. And bringing in more great wrestlers, more partnership and collaboration, it's been excellent. 
and we're extending it beyond Forbidden Door. We're doing Wrestle Dynasty in Japan. You'll continue to see great involvement in New Japan Pro Wrestling from the, our great stars. It's been great for our New Japan Pro Wrestling to have one of the most accomplished, legendary stars of all time. John Moxley is the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. He made history for AEW and New Japan this year. He's the first man ever to hold the AEW World Championship, the WWE World Championship, and the IWGP World Championship. And uh, all kinds of great collaboration this year with New Japan and AEW. Now we have a double champion with Mercedes Monet, who is the New Japan Strong Women's Champion and the TBS Champion. So lots of great connectivity. And it's amazing to see how far that partnership has grown over the past three years. And we love working with New Japan. And the past year, I've really enjoyed getting to know the executives at Stardom and CMLL and work with them closer and closer. Great to have our stars wrestling overseas in Japan, like I said, with Mox, Brian Danielson, great wrestlers from AEW going over to New Japan. We've had top AEW wrestlers going over to Stardom, including Willow Nightingale, took on Tam Nakano, and tonight they teamed here at Forbidden Door. That's really exciting. and. Uh, great to see that going into Willow Nightingale, the defending Owen Hart Foundation Cup winner, going into her big match in Chicago on Wednesday night versus her former friend Chris Statlander. We've had so many great wrestlers from AEW going to Arena Mexico this year with great stars like John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Matt Seidel, and Claudio Castagnoli, with Mercedes Monet, Chris Jericho, really cool crossovers and partnerships. It just keeps growing and we want to keep working and expanding with the great companies all over the world. Thanks for asking. Hello, Tony. Carlos Mendoza for Flex Sessions. Talking about that expansion, also with the Latin community, is Puerto Rico a destination that you would like to explore at some point? I know for a fact, because I, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, that there is a lot of different companies that put top stars out in the world. Um, is so, which thing is gonna be best? Um, AW Dynamite, uh, pay-per-view, which one do you think that's gonna be best for that Paradise Island? I think it would be great for AEW to make our debut in Puerto Rico, I would love that. We've had AEW in so many great countries and territories all over the world, and bringing AEW to Puerto Rico would be another great milestone in the history of this global wrestling promotion in a country and a territory Puerto Rico that has had an amazing, amazing history of pro wrestling. Some of the greatest wrestlers in all the world have wrestled there, and a lot of the top stars in AEW have gone to Puerto Rico and wrestled before they came to AEW, John Moxley being one of them, and a lot of our top stars have participated and wrestled in Puerto Rico, but uh, we've never gone there as a company AEW. I think that would be an amazing milestone for us, absolutely, and what a great question on a night of milestones and international collaboration in AEW. Thank you. Hi, Tony. Press the start here from Fightful. Um, a while ago, you had spoke about the super heavyweight division, the meat division, if you will, with people like Kesha Serra coming in and Jeff Cobb. Do we have any ideas of when we're going back to that? And is the next pay-per-view at Wembley a good time to start chanting meat for real? <laughs> well, that's very good. I think we can chant meat anytime. And we've seen lots of, lots of meat moments. And we've had some real monsters and uh, monstrosities and, and uh, lots of great meat chants and opportunities for that. And, it's definitely something to think about super heavyweights and uh, we've got some of the great heavyweights it was great to see that and when Jeff Cobb and Samoa Joe have hooked up a few times now that's been in particular really exciting we've got some great big men uh, and definitely some great big stars so it's something to keep an eye on that'd be a lot of fun there's a lot of championships in wrestling but certainly at least anytime we can get the big uh, big men fighting, I, I love it. And uh, even if we're not ready for a championship or anything like that now, I do think those matches are exciting and we've seen that people get really engaged when those big guys start fighting and they love chanting meat. <laughs> Keep the meat chants coming, guys. <laughs> uh, all right, one more question for Tony. Corey Lee with Wrestling Observer. Uh, two more questions. First, um, pay-per-view numbers. Um, do we have an estimate on what the pay-per-view numbers are for the show? And the second question I have for you is regards to the new deal that's gonna be coming up uh, soon. Um, a lot of different companies, uh, NHL, NBA, they're doing multiple, 
like having linear television and then non-linear t- uh, television through streaming services. Is that something that you're interested in, in negotiating with um, the different partners, having a linear home and then also a streaming home like, like the NBA and the NHL do have at this time? Sure. I think it's great questions. Uh, I'm really excited about our partnership here, Warner Brothers Discovery. It's been amazing. We're coming up on the five-year anniversary of AEW Dynamite this year, and we're approaching, just in a few weeks, the 250th episode of Wednesday Night Dynamite. Uh, And so many great things happening in the company. Uh, To your first question, uh, which I believe, so you were asking, you, you was a two-part part, two yeah. question. First part, you asked yeah, the just, just es- estimate on the on the pay-per-view. And now I won't know the cable and satellite numbers yeah. for a while. I'm only projecting off digital buys, but we did fantastic tonight. Forbidden Door was our biggest debut of any of the pay-per-view events, and then it was up last year, and I expect another great result based on the digital buys, which were excellent. We were off to a great year. All four pay-per-views this year now have done really well. They've all been great events. Revolution, one of our best shows, maybe our best show we've ever done, and also one of our biggest pay-per-view events. In fact, in the past calendar year, we've had two of the three biggest pay-per-views in AEW history. We've expanded the calendar and continue to grow and grow the buys, and I think this is gonna be our record year. And uh, really, really good numbers on digital, and we'll find out cable and satellite, but it should be really, really strong. Uh, And like I said, we let off the year with one of our best shows ever, one of our best numbers ever for Revolution, and we kept a real hot streak going now. Dynasty, great debut, double or nothing, fantastic results, and now Forbidden Door. I think it's safe to say three years in a row, great business across the board, pay-per-view and live event, and as an international, uh, really, mecca. Thank you. And Tony, congratulations on the success of Forbidden Door tonight. What an incredible show. Thank you guys all so much for coming out and your amazing questions for all of our talent. And for Tony, safe travels home. Hopefully, we'll see you.